Welcome to the program. I'm Mark Imperial. This segment's being brought to you by booksgrowbusiness.com. It's the place where busy professionals and entrepreneurs publish to inform their consumers, to grow their practices, and to leave a legacy. We're doing a series of spotlights with remarkable attorneys across the country with the focus on estate planning and elder law. Joining me on this segment is Samantha McCarthy, and she's an attorney in Rhode Island and serving also Massachusetts uh, with a focus on elder law and estate planning. Samantha, welcome to the program. Thank you so much. Glad to be here. I know elder law is a, a broad topic, so please tell us a little bit about uh, your areas of focus on that spectrum and the types of folks that you help. Sure. Uh, so elder law is really kind of thought of as a specialty in the estate planning world. And elder law focuses really on as people age, how do we make sure they have the services they need, the care they need, and the money to pay for that care. So a big part of our practice in elder law is people are aging and they can't live safely at home anymore. So how can we get them into assisted living? How can we get them into a nursing home? What does their care plan look like? And also, how do we get access to services or government assistance to pay for that care? So Medicaid planning is a lot of what we do. People work really hard their whole lives for all their money, and then they fear losing it all to the nursing home. So we help people plan so that doesn't happen. Since elder law is a relatively new evolution of this, uh, I'd imagine a lot of folks really don't know much about it. When, when folks reach out to you, what do you find that they're mostly missing or what are the biggest challenges that they're facing that they didn't quite understand how to prepare for? I think one of the struggles is people don't understand that there's options at the last minute. So a lot of people hear about a five-year look back rule, which is a, a period in which the government's gonna look back to see if you transferred any assets. And if you haven't planned ahead five years or more, people think you don't have options. And there are a lot of options, but the other struggle is everybody hears from their neighbor or their friend or their cousin, what happened and the, uh, the facts and the law apply so differently to everybody's specific situation based upon are you married? Are you not? What property do you have? What title are your assets in? How are they held? What kind of uh, funds do you have invested? And so, you know, a lot of people come and say, oh, my neighbor lost their house and I don't want that to happen. Well, that might not even be an option to happen to you based on your own circumstances. So speaking of that, like things like, hey, people losing their houses, what are some other like commonly held misconceptions or myths out there that you've heard? So, I mean, for instance, in Rhode Island, retirement accounts are not considered an available resource to pay for your care, but in Massachusetts, they are. So people think everything's going to go to the nursing home, and that's not the case. If you have a community spouse, there are certain assets you're available or you're allowed to keep. And if you don't have a community spouse, you might not be allowed to keep those. So a lot of misconceptions just surrounding the fact that, you know, people hear the really bad parts of the rules, like losing your house. You don't actually lose your house. You're allowed to keep it while you're living. But if you pass away, the state can file a lien against it to recover for what they've paid out for your care. But there's ways to work around that as well. So there's just a lot of information, a lot of fear-based discussion out there with seniors, which is completely understandable. But we try to kind of cut through that and help people see how they actually can get the care they need and also not lose everything. A lot of folks really don't like to think about the subject and, and kick the can down the road and, and don't actually prepare till like it's almost too late. If you could wave a magic wand, how would you advise people into how, how early they should start planning for this and that it's okay? Sure. I mean, the earlier, the better. So if we're talking about long-term care planning and elder law, you know, five years is the key term right now. It might be seven years in the future. It used to be three years. So when you don't have a significant health crisis, that's a good time to be making the plan so that when you do, maybe you've made the plan far enough in advance that we can save everything you have. But, you know, elder law is a part of my practice. The other part's estate planning and estate planning starts with anybody who's over the age of 18 should have powers of attorney. So college students should have powers of attorney that say their parents can pay their bills or access their medical information, talk to doctors if something happens. So our clients really stretch from college age kids, parents with young families, all the way through seniors and then helping families through the dying process and then also probate after their death. So it sounds like estate planning is really a great place to start in a non-threatening sort of a way because you're, you, when you're ridiculously young, you won't be thinking about those things. And it's also a way to, to breach the conversation. That's absolutely true. I, I will say that COVID has brought an awareness to the fact that, you know, we're all going to die at some point. And so, you know, we have seen younger and younger clients coming in and having these conversations. Nobody wants to talk about dying, but I always say to clients, you know, if you make the plan, now you can put it away, forget about it. You don't have to think about it for a while, but you can also sleep well at night knowing you've 
plan to protect what you work so hard for, but also the people that you love. I mean, that's one of the key parts of this is how do we make sure our family is okay? So I've heard of the term uh, trusts, and they say that that's always a, a great way to make sure that you're, you're, everything's protected and you avoid the courts. Tell us a little bit about trusts. What are they really, what are they called and what do yeah. they do for you? So there's several different kinds of trusts, but at the most basic level, a revocable trust is a trust where you maintain control of your own assets. So anything you're able to do now, you can do through the trust, but you are avoiding court when you pass, you're avoiding probate. And so a really common misconception uh, in the world is that if you have a will, you have a complex estate plan and you're all set, but really all a will does is guarantee you're going to go to probate. So a will tells the world what you want to happen to your stuff when you pass away and who you want to manage the process of transferring your things, but it requires probate court oversight. So the trust allows you to avoid that. I like to think of them both as expenses and pieces of paper that say what you want to happen to your stuff when you pass away, but the trust has like a bucket attached to it and that bucket can hold assets. And so because there's a bucket attached to it holding assets, we look to the trust for the rules of what happened. And so then the trust after your passing can say, here's how I want to provide for my family. Here's structure. If you have young kids, maybe you don't want them inheriting everything outright if something happens. So we have a plan in place to say, how will things be managed for their benefit? And also who's going to do that management? Great insight. Samantha, what inspired you to focus on elder law and estate planning? How did you get started in this field? Sure. So I grew up uh, living next door to my grandfather who has multiple sclerosis. And so I saw, you know, on a day-to-day -day basis, the difficulty our family had in accessing services and having the right information. You know, if you're really wealthy, you can afford to pay someone 24 seven to care for you in your home. If you're poor, you can maybe get Medicaid to do that. But if you're in this middle gap where you're not rich and you're not poor, and maybe you're lower middle class, but you're still not poor enough for the government to help you, there's an access to services issue and there's just not enough information available. And so I saw those struggles as a family and I saw what we had to do to make sure my grandpa was provided for and protected and my grandmother as well, you know, so that she wouldn't lose everything if something happened to him. And so that just really inspired me to say there's a need here and there's a need for these people to be taken care of in a compassionate and caring way, which sometimes gets lost in the law and with lawyers. And so um, I think that's kind of what we've brought to our clients is the fact that I've been through a lot of these things myself as a family. Um, and so that helps my clients understand I get it from a personal level and a professional level. Before I ask you my last question, is there anything that I didn't think to ask you that you think is important to share with my audience in regard to, you know, getting prepared and uh, in this regard, anything that you'd care to share? Yeah, I think the most important thing for people to think about is you don't have to have all the answers. If you're working with the right professional, they're going to ask you the question. So a lot of people are afraid to start the process because they don't have everything together or they don't know what they don't know. Um, and, and really the most important piece is just scheduling the consultation or making the call because then the attorney can help walk you through the rest of the process. Uh, you know, the fear of talking about dying is not as scary when you actually do it. So just make the call, you know, get your asset list together. And beyond that, you know, someone can guide you through the process. Sage advice. Samantha, for folks listening that are in your area that you can serve and would like to connect with you, where do they find you and, and how do they learn more? Sure. Um, you can find us online at www.mccarthylawri.com. You can also email us at admin at mccarthylawri.com or you can, send us, uh, um, you can send us a connection on our website that will go directly to our email. You can also call us at 401-541-5540. This has been terrific. I, I really appreciate you taking the time and sharing with my audience today, Samantha, and I wish you continued success for you and for all of your clients. Absolutely. Thanks so much. Samantha McCarthy, attorney with McCarthy Law RI. And this segment's been brought to you by booksgrowbusiness.com. It's the place where busy professionals publish to inform their audiences, to grow their practices, and to leave a legacy. That's all for now. I'm Mark Imperial, and thanks for joining me.